My father was a naval officer oh, okay. in the Nigerian Navy and then when the war started, of course, he joined the Biafra <laughs> Navy. He was out in Portugal with some other officers looking for arms for Biafra okay. when the war ended. Hi guys, welcome again to Legi TV. My name is Abisola Alawode and today I have a star actress. I don't know if I should just say star actress. If you grew up in Nigeria, if you know Nollywood as well at all, in any way you would know who I have for myself. Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's welcome. I feel like I should say your surname is Lilian Aluko, but I feel like there's a high from there. Yes, Ama Aluko. Okay, Lilian Ama Aluko. Yes. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Man. The pleasure is mine, Abisola. <laughs> oh, she called my name. <laughs> called my name. Okay, so mom, let me ask you. Um, how long have you been acting? My very first was 1996, out okay. of bounds. Okay, 1996. I didn't even want to calculate how many years, <laughs> how many years ago it was, but you started in 1996, yeah. and 2020 is still here doing what you love. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel blessed. Okay. It's a privilege to be able to work at something you actually enjoy. Okay, okay, because to young actors and everybody who's watching out there, I like the fact that you said it's a privilege to work on something you enjoy. Because we have a lot of actors and actresses coming into the game now, and what do you think is that thing they should know before they even step before a camera? Well, judging by my experience, I would say they have to love acting. You have to love living someone else's life. If you, do, if you love that, then you will do well and you will enjoy you it. Do well. So it has to come from a place of love. You should not do it just because of the money or anything. No. If you do it because of the money, you're going to be frustrated. Because <laughs> frankly speaking, acting is frustrating. There's yes. a lot of rejection. There's a lot of, not so much work around this space. Okay. You know, the kind of roles one really wants to get into. So you have to love it. Okay. That's the only way you will stick with it. Okay, you just so basically, she, what she's saying, the money no day. So <laughs> Some people are making money. Don't get me wrong. Okay, you know, but there are very few. Okay, most of those who are really acting are doing it because they love it. Okay, okay. there are easier ways to make money. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like the fact that you said there are easier ways to make money, but for you, why was it acting? Why didn't you say, okay, you wanted to be a singer, you wanted to play politics or something? Okay, I can't sing to save my life. <laughs> if I live another life, that's okay. a gift I'll ask God for. <laughs> but yes, um, when I was about, I'm sure maybe seven or eight, I grew up in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Oh. And when I was that young, my parents took us to the cinema. It was kind of maybe a bi-monthly routine. Okay. And on this occasion, we saw the sound of music. Oh, wow. Okay. And I fell in love. Okay. So I said, this is what I want to do. And you <laughs> followed that part through and... Uh, it was, let's just say, I never forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I had other ideas. I also had other things I loved. But it was something I always kept coming back to. Every time I watch a movie that catches my fancy. I'll say, I want to do this. Mm. You know, and of course, when Living in Bondage exploded on our screens, I said, <laughs> I am going Comrade to do Australia, this. You, yes. must, you must do this. Yes. The fact that you say you grew up in Sierra Leone and you're in Nigeria now, tell us a little bit about that journey. How did the whole thing happen? Ah, my father was a naval officer. Oh, okay. In the Nigerian Navy. And then when the war started of course he joined the Biafra <laughs> Navy okay. and from what I heard he was out in Portugal with some other officers looking for arms for Biafra okay. when the war ended oh. so they didn't come back their colleagues said don't come back okay. you know he because his family was still in Nigeria he started looking for somewhere closer so from <laughs> Portugal he ended up in Freetown okay. quite a few other officers both Army and Navy okay. ended up in Freetown. So there was this community of a community Nigerian of military men and their families in Freetown. In Freetown. Yeah. So how was growing up in Freetown like? It was fun. It was a small, uh, was a small city. Okay. 
clean. I remember that. In the mornings, you'd see the trucks moving, watering the streets before oh, wow. the sweepers come. Yeah, it, it was routine. You know, so it was a clean, small place. I went to school at St. Anthony's okay. Primary School, Brookfield. Nice, clean. The Saro people are fun-loving, no stress, <laughs> no aggro. You know? <laughs> you know, my next question was going to be compared to Lagos and, and now, but hearing you talk about it, I feel like, no. You already, the, the answer is there already. The answer, yeah, the answer but, is there. But then, Lagos has a vibe that is all its own. Mm. You know, if you've lived in Lagos, it's difficult to actually mm -hmm. settle anywhere else. <laughs> there anything you do not like about what is going on in Hollywood at the moment? There's a lot I don't like, but then that's me personally. Okay. Okay. There's also a lot that I like. Oh, okay. You know, there's the crop of people coming up, the filmmakers, the young very talented director, producers, mm -hmm. actors. I think they are doing good stuff. Okay. And of course, the veterans who have <laughs> stayed <laughs> the course. Yes. You know, so those are the good sides. Okay. What is not so good for me is the fact that it's very difficult to actually make a decent living from the industry. Okay. One, you have piracy. Two, there's so few cinemas. That can show these films. Yes, there's so few cinemas. So you make a film, some people are spending a few hundred millions mm -hmm. making movies, and then it goes to the cinema. It stays only two weeks or three weeks because it's not enough there's... to report the money. Anymore. Yes, okay. so that's soul destroying, you know. So that for me, and then the fact that the environment in Nigeria is tough, it's rough. You're running generators 24/7, which hikes the production costs. We don't have dedicated film villages but going to people's homes so it's really dif uh, difficult to recreate the ambience you want so enabling environment piracy and then of course there's funding because investors are not sure okay. that they will recoup their, their money, money. It's difficult. Everybody who puts money into a business wants to make his money and make some profit. Of course. Yeah, so those are the things those that... Are the things. Okay, so let's say you were put in charge of money right now. How would you make things right? First, I believe that the government needs to create an enabling environment. Okay. For instance, let's say we have a place that is called a film village. Let's say there's funding for people to build the kind of studios you have in other countries where you can go in and shoot an entire film. You know, if that is in place and is affordable, because that's, uh, having it is one thing, being affordable is another, then filmmakers will be able to, be able to make money yes <laughs> and then of course if we have enough cinemas okay. so that a good movie goes to the cinema and it stays there it stays for there. A, a, a long enough yeah. No, it works for the filmmakers and it also works for the viewers as well they exactly get to, they get to enjoy so that people are not under pressure now when a movie i want to see comes mm -hmm. i'm like oh i need to go see it because <laughs> before you know it's out, it's of, out the of the cinema we're talking about the series oasis why should we watch it? Why should we bother ourselves with watching it at all? Well, I think everybody should watch it okay. for several reasons. Okay. One, it's beautiful pictures, lovely, lovely story that strikes home. Okay. Everybody, Nigerians and people from everywhere else can relate to the story because it's about everyday people. It's about stuff that your children, your grandchildren, your parents, grandparents, live through every day the beauty for me is that the story has a religious background okay. without being overtly churchy <laughs> there's no preachy 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 <laughs> but the story tells itself it gives you the morals you need to it tells you without preaching what is right and what is wrong and i think it's time we started coming up with a defined content. Yeah. We need to change the narrative. People say sex sells. Mm -hmm. It's all the, the negative things mm -hmm. that is promoted on our airwaves. Yeah. It's time to start promoting the right things. 
in a beautiful way that everybody will want to relate to. It's time to start creating lovable characters that people will want to emulate. Okay. So that for me is the beauty of us. Okay. So this is what we should look out for. Uh, you should look out for okay. it. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure and we really fine. do wish you good luck. And hopefully we get to meet somewhere again. I will not talk about the fact. Hopefully Nepal does. <laughs> Up this game. Up this game. <laughs>